When we're writing or speaking persuasively, it's really critical that we fill in all of the pertinent information for our audience. This means that we don't leave any blanks unfilled, we don't leave any questions unanswered. One way to do this is through providing logically based evidence to supplement our claims so that no one can go, but why did you say that? Or why is that important? I'm gonna provide you today with one way to do this through making a claim and then providing reasoning and evidence to back up that claim. So you may have learned before that in order to give good feedback to a coworker or to a classmate, you have to take three steps, describe, evaluate, and suggest. First, you describe what you're seeing, then you evaluate it based on pre-established criteria, and then you make suggestions for improvement. The same thing goes for proposing action or trying to convince someone to be on your side. First, you have to describe what's going on. Say what you're seeing here. If you're writing a proposal, you might talk about what's going on in a company or for an organization. Then you have to evaluate it. Explain how it doesn't meet the desires or the requirements of your audience. Are the objectives being reached? If no, then you suggest. You make advice for improvement. How are we as a team or as an organization or as a company well situated to make conditions into desired ones? Now, when you're proposing this action, you're gonna need evidence to back it up. Logos is king in our Western persuasive rhetorical world. Logical, fact-based evidence. Facts and figures are one way to do this. We think that numbers are really powerful, quantification is king, but this is just one way to make a logically based audience, uh, excuse me, argument. It doesn't work to just give figures or facts if you don't explain them and provide justification for why they fit your desired outcome. So what you need when making a logical argument is a claim, a reason, and evidence. See, the theme of today's lesson is threes. So what does it mean to make a claim and then back it up with reasoning and evidence? Well, first, I have an example that seems a little funny, but it's really good at illustrating why this framework is so powerful. A claim is a statement you believe to be true and you can justify. For example, I think that dogs are better than cats. Sorry, cat lovers. I like cats too, but I just like dogs more. Notice how the statement doesn't necessarily have to be factually bedrock true. I mean... I think that dogs are empirically better than cats, but really, there's no way to judge this. However, if I back my claim up with reasoning and evidence, it becomes more compelling. My argument becomes a little bit more watertight. So second, a reason is a statement of why you believe your claim to be true. Well, I think that dogs are better than cats because dogs are social and cats are sociopaths. So we're getting closer to an irritated argument here, but what we need now is some sort of evidence to back it up. Specific facts, which can include quantitative data, support your reason and make it more compelling. Well, I think dogs are better than cats because every time I meet a cat, I feel like it's plotting my demise. They kill for fun, they constantly check me for weaknesses, like when they need on you, they're cold and aloof. Whereas dogs, on the other hand, are just derpy and never stop loving you. This is a whole boatload of evidence to support my claim that dogs are better than cats. Some of this evidence could be real compelling to other people who share these experiences. They are anecdotal for the most part, but they still are more powerful than me just simply saying dogs are better than cats, which as a claim on its own can be very controversial. Okay, okay. Moving beyond the humorous, here's another example of the claim, reasoning, and evidence framework that comes from my own research as someone who looks at how older adults use technology. 
So, a claim, a statement that I think is true and that I can justify. I think that smartphones don't meet the needs of older adults age 70 and up. Smartphones don't meet the needs of grandma. So my reason, why do I believe my claim is true? Cutting edge technology just isn't designed with senior citizens in mind. It's made by young people for young people. Think about your stereotype of a Silicon Valley startup entrepreneur. It's a 20 something dude in a hoodie. He is not thinking about grandma or grandpa when he puts together the latest app. So how can I back this up with evidence? Well, I'm a researcher. I've studied this for the last five years. Evidence is my bread and butter. I deal in this all the time. For one, smartphone use drops off sharply after age 60. This is empirically proven from large scale studies done by the Pew Foundation. Older results, in turn, represent an untapped market for this product. In my own work interviewing and observing older adults, time and again they say that they want to be tech savvy. They yearn to understand how to use technology and be literate in it. But they see smartphones in particular as invasive, and that's, not that, and that's why they don't want to use them. Time and again, I've heard older adults whom I interview talk about the dinner table conversation problem. They don't like when they're with their grandchildren or other young people under the age of 30 and these people pull out their smartphone at the table. They see mealtime as a sacred time and they see smartphones as encroaching upon that time for face-to-face -face conversation and quality time. So if we solve the dinner table conversation problem this issue of smartphones encroaching upon sacred spaces in their lives, then older adults might be more likely to adopt them and use them. These are just two examples of using the claim reasoning evidence framework. My challenge to you is to think about how to integrate this into your own writing projects. How can you use reasoning and evidence to back up the claims that you're making to make them more compelling and justifiable to your audience. Good luck and happy writing.